uh, to, to close today's uh, conference, I, I'm going to invite Ted Lempert to the stage. Ted is the uh, CEO of uh, Children Now, again, a, a partner with PACE on our work on accountability, a former member of the assembly, former multiple things, many things, uh, expert on all things education, and I will simply uh, let him uh, give us our closing, closing message. Thanks, Ted. Uh, all right, well, thank you, uh, David, for putting together this extraordinary uh, afternoon and, and really fantastic group of, of speakers. So it's like, it's also thanks a lot for asking me to summarize this in a, in a few minutes, especially after the who's who of speakers uh, we've just had. So uh, I promise I'll be very brief. I'm going to rattle off some specific next steps, but I just want to make two general comments uh, first before I rattle those off uh, and we close. It was uh, Rick Miller who talked about the divide we had in the past where we know what matters, but we're not measuring it. And I want to just stop for a minute on that what matters question. Now, we all know what matters. My kids, uh, as a parent, we all believe that. And uh, you know, I'm always thinking about my kids. And uh, my youngest, Julianne, uh, actually has a lot of fun with that. When I come home, she says, uh, so how are the other children now uh, doing? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and how's the other six million doing? Um, but um, it, she, all joking aside, uh, we know what matters. And that is each and every one of those uh, six million kids. And, and what unites us, and as we you know, talk about the past, I think back when I went to school, uh, how different things were, right? Because back then, when one of those kids didn't reach their full potential, it was a tragedy for that child and their family. And I don't need to tell this group what we, we know today, and that is, if any one of those kids doesn't meet their full potential today, it's not just a tragedy for that child and their family. It's a tragedy for all of us, given the complex world that we live in, what the economy looks like today, and recognizing that, unlike the past, today, every kid really does need to have um, a, a great uh, education. And so as we appropriately, and I think that all the speakers did today, a great job of talking about all the failings of the past system, uh, as we push that aside to focus on one good piece of it. And I'm reminded when I first entered the legislature and Rick Simpson tutored me on everything in the 1989, the one thing we never talked about was the achievement gap because we didn't have any measurement and we didn't know what was going on. And if there's one piece of progress we've made, and thanks to so many folks in this room, you look at it, we've made so much progress with our English language learners and, and kids in poverty with the local control funding formula. We are making progress in part because the focus has been on the achievement gap. And despite all its flaws, what that old accountability system kept us uh, uh, focusing on. And you know, there's, we have a long ways to go. And the other thing I'm struck as I listen here today is when you do focus groups and look at polling, it's actually low-income parents and parents of, of color, which as we all know is the vast majority of parents in this state who are the most clamoring for accountability. There's a real d disconnect with, with higher income families. So I say that as a general point because what we need to do as we move, as we move forward with this new system that as all the speakers have talked about, you know, really moves away from the punitive and talks about supporting success and really focuses on continued improvement, that we don't lose that piece of the past system that is a focus on every single child. And the other thing we need to keep in mind then is how we do that, that, that what's gonna be very difficult, and every speaker talked about it, and that is the state local. And that in, in a local control system, the state has that constitutional role in, in genuinely, in, in, in really making sure it's a guarantor, guarantor of student success, in balancing that with genuinely valuing local priorities. And as, as Linda Darling Hammond talked about, the, the folks who are teaching and doing the work, knowing the work best. So lots of really tough issues to get at where we actually have to balance that every child versus a system that's not punitive, a system that balances the appropriate state and local role. The good news is I see so much agreement out there in an education world that folks say is so divided. Um, a number of years ago, Children Now, CSBA, uh, PTA, and Legal Voters did a project where we went around and interviewed behind closed doors a diverse array of groups. 
um, after getting down to facts. And it was really extraordinary about how much agreement there was. And one of that bubbling up of agreements was changing the finance system. And, and you know, we all can applaud the great work of so many folks here that led to the LCFF and the new finance system. We're starting a similar process now in accountability, and it is remarkable when you talk to folks one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm talking about a full, wide range of groups, how much agreement there really is. So I really do think working together, as challenging it's gonna be, we can design a system that has broad consensus and folks agree to. So with, with those two general points, uh, one minute just rattling off some very specific next uh, steps that taking notes on what I heard today. We obviously need to broaden our outcome measures. Um, it's clear that there's important technical and policy work necessary to build the information system and interactive dashboard that we've heard about today so that diverse needs of stakeholders are addressed and we truly promote continuous improvement. Um, we need to focus on the LCAP evaluation rubric mentioned numerous times in the major lift that the state is, is undertaking with that. It will be critical to build a flexible in infrastructure so that the collaborative can adapt to the changing needs of the field over time and effectively connect their work to that of the department, county offices of education, universities, and other technical assistance providers. Um, there were a number of approaches for supporting schools and districts that were discussed today. Um, including compiling, curating, disseminating evidence-based policies and practices, facilitating self, peer, and expert review processes, and supporting pairing and collaboration between schools and districts. Each of these uh, components, and, and there's lots of others, um, are going to be knitted, have to be knitted together effectively um, so that we really can uh, have a, a sensible accountability framework going forward. Um, it also makes it an extremely exciting and critical time for both the field um, and for uh, the policymakers. So there's numerous stakeholders that need to be part of this. Uh, clearly, uh, first and foremost, educators, the equity community, business leaders, higher education, uh, and policymakers um, who are deeply vested in these decisions. And we need to create the time, space, and capacity for this conversation to unfold in a coordinated fashion. And it's, it's certainly our hope at Children Now that the administration and, and legislature develop a process that allows for this conversation to unfold in an open, inclusive way over the months ahead. Finally, uh, we'll be making key decisions over the next couple of years, as has been talked about, um, in terms of assessment, information management, capacity building, and support. Um, but I hope we proceed on two fronts. One, doing what we can do now with the systems, resources, and capacity currently available can't do it all, and two, all the while being mindful of where we want the system to end up, how we ultimately want it to look, so we don't build something in the short term uh, that can't meet our ultimate vision. Um, as I listen to the comments today, um, I'm actually feeling very optimistic. It's an extraordinarily busy and crazy time in the education world in California, but as many have, have mentioned, it's nice to have California leading the way again and have folks from the rest of the country looking to us for direction, looking to us for leadership, looking for us uh, to show how an excellent education system uh, can be devised. So um, I'm very optimistic and thank uh, all of you for your great work and participation today. Thank you.